Professor Bernard Yuen, Dean NUS Business School, Pro Professor Mohan Kankanhali, NUS Vice Provost, distinguished guests, fellow graduates, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon all of you. It's an honour to be here today addressing so many bright sparks who will one day join the ranks of the best business minds in this country. Congratulations to you as you embark on the next chapter of your life. This brings back fond memories of my own time in the accountancy faculty. At that time, NUS was still known as the University of Singapore. I guess I'm showing my vintage here. As he said, accountants are never good at telling jokes, so I'll spare you that. Instead, I would like to share with you my personal journey and a few key things that have stood me well in work and in life. I hope these insights will be helpful as you learn to find your way in life. At 18, I had no burning ambition. I came from a humble background, so all I wanted was to get a professional qualification so that I can get to work quickly, as, as quickly as possible to contribute to the family income. I was debating whether to do law or accountancy. Thanks to my father, who ran a small trading business, I was better at numbers. And as accountancy then was the only three-year course that awarded an honours degree, my choice was made. So how did I go from 18 with no particular ambition except to make good, to have the honour of addressing you here today? As practical as circumstances made me, I was also hungry to learn. After I graduated, I got my first job at a local bank and was put through its management trainee program. But the security of banking wasn't enough to keep me there. After two years, I joined a mid-sized company as a corporate analyst, though I did have several options. And I can tell you that I've got some of my best training there. Why? Well, in the large MMC, your job scope can get too specialised, even at fairly junior levels. In the mid-sized firm, I was involved in many different areas of work and transactions, including mergers and acquisitions, and my involvement was from start to end, I, from identifying targets to valuation to structuring, negotiation and closing deals. It was definitely no walk in the park. By the time I left the company, almost eight years later, I had picked up many valuable skills which have seen me through my career. Why do I share this? Because I know a lot of young people make their career decisions based largely on pay. So much so that some universities even have ads featuring how much their respective grads made. You have a lot more opportunities today, so money shouldn't be everything, and definitely not at this stage of your life. Instead of thinking about how to make the first million first, look for career options that will give you the opportunity to learn and grow. Working life is a marathon, not a sprint. Once you equip yourself with a range of skills and depth of experience, you become more confident of your decision-making and more marketable in the long term. I joined the then Telecommunications Authority of Singapore as treasurer in 1989 and have been with Singtel for a quarter of a century. I know many people in this room weren't even born then. It was an unusual choice as the telecoms industry is a male-centric, engineering-based one. But I was excited by the challenge. There was a lot of talk about its impending corporatization that is converting from a statutory board to a company and maybe a subsequent listing on the stock exchange. Little did I know that at the grand old age of 31, I'll be given the job of leading the first major corporatization of a government body. This was followed by the largest IPO in Singapore. That was the start of what we know as Singtel. The rest, as they say, is history. Today, Singtel has a market value in excess of $60 billion.
There are certainly a few takeaways that I'd like to share with you. First of all, never be complacent. When competition was introduced to the Singapore telecoms market, we thought Singtel was ready for it. After all, we were the incumbent and the dominant player. But the reality was something else. One day, we were the monopoly in a small domestic market, and the next, our pie was shrinking with new industry entrants. It was a good wake-up call, and we started fighting to keep market share. Since then, we have never taken our incumbency for granted. Just because we're the first doesn't mean we can afford to take it easy. In fact, because we were, the, we were there first, people rightfully have high expectations of us. While we are thankful that many of our customers believed in us and have stayed loyal over the years, we are mindful that many need more persuading. Every customer who emails me with a complaint or, com or calls our customer care officers with an issue is a reminder to try harder, do better, and do right by them. I may look after many other businesses of Singtel, but looking after our Singapore consumer is a top priority. So even if you are in the lead, never be complacent because it takes work, a lot of work to stay there. We'll continue to do all it takes to win our skeptics over, customer by customer, with better service, better coverage, and better user experience. The other curveball we were thrown when we lost our monopoly, how were we supposed to grow our business in that new normal? The answer was obvious. We had to look overseas. Which brings me to my second point. You have to take risk. Did Singtel compete overseas before? No. Could we compete overseas? We didn't know until we tried. So we did. So long before the government talked about building a second wing for the economy, we were flying to Britain, Sweden, and Norway to do business. Did we succeed in every venture? On the bigger deals, we did well, but others, we make mistakes. But the experience taught us how to better evaluate our investments, work with partners, and set up proper processes. Importantly, we became more culturally sensitive. Which brings me to my third point. When you take risks, be prepared to fail. We still take calculated risks to create long-term growth. Despite strong criticisms from naysayers, we invested in many regional telco companies under the most challenging conditions. Those investments are increasingly paying off as consumers continue their march from voice to data. More recently, we made the bold decision to invest in new areas such as digital marketing and cybersecurity. So as young people starting out in your careers, don't be afraid to take risks. We have a saying at Singtel, fail fast, fail cheap. We want our people to innovate, but if things don't work out, we learn from our mistakes and try again. If, we are if you are open to failure, you are open to opportunity. The risk-reward payoff can be tremendous. Today, Singtel's overseas operations have grown so much that they account for 75% of our earnings. We are one of the few homegrown MNCs that have managed to diversify its earnings to this degree. We hire some 13,000 people in Singapore. So I've seen my fair share of people who job hop for one or $200 more in pay. That is short-sighted. Many graduates think that because Singapore has done well, there are many good jobs and salaries will continue to rise. But as we become more globalised, you're not just competing against the person next to you. It could be someone from US, China or India who is just as diligent and smart. So you need an edge to set you apart. As one of Singapore's largest employers, I'll tell you what I'm looking for in an employee. People who are hungry to learn. My team and I are prepared to invest in our employees to help them reach their full potential. We also look for people who are willing to take risks 
or have what I call the challenger spirit. The pace of change in my industry is relentless. We want people who dare to innovate and take on challenges with us. I've always stressed that Singtel is about developing star teams rather than individual stars. So we want collaborative people who are willing to support each other's efforts in an increasingly complex world. I, for one, to all, all, all my successes to the great team in Singtel. My final piece of advice, don't forget your passion. You have many working years ahead of you. You need to be passionate about what you are doing to last the course and deliver your best. How do you identify your passion? If you feel excited and motivated to get to work every day, just as I have over the last 25 years, that's the true test. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you all the best. Thank you.